Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyan Manjai Vidya Peet for the students of standard 9 in which we are learning the subject of English. Students from the previous lecture we started with one of the new chapters in uh, moments that is the supplementary reader. Name of the chapter is The Accidental Tourist. Uh, the author of this chapter is Bill Bryson. Here we have a personal account of uh, the author himself. He uh, writes his own experience, especially when he is traveling. Otherwise, he is quite a simple, well-to-do person. Yes, and is quite good at his work. But when he is traveling, he tends to forget things. Right? He fumbles uh, with things. It's not that the author is a forgetful person, but time and again he creates or he accidentally makes such errors and that is why the name of the chapter, the accidental tourist, he creates accidents whenever he is traveling, wherever he is out of his hometown, he is traveling. At that time he uh, very consistently makes errors, creates errors, mistakes and which embarrasses him in front of others, which embarrasses even his family members when they are with him. So, uh, let us take a quick recap of what we have learned in the earlier lecture. The author has a tendency of creating accidents wherever he goes. Uh, basically, what other people do very normally, the author, he fumbles over those things, he frustrates over those things and he is not able to do the same things normally or the same things at quite a lot of ease as other people do it. And this is what separates the author from others that others, it's a very daily routine, it's a, it's a day to day work for everyone else and they do it with lots of ease and those are the same things while traveling, while he is abroad or while he is traveling, he finds those very things quite difficult and that amazes him, himself also and he puts himself in jeopardy plus he creates lots of problems for others also. So we can see that uh, he gives us some instances, all of these instances they are quite humorous, yes they create humor. and. The author is laughing at himself actually, he finds himself in such conditions and situation which he created on his own without knowing. It was not purposefully done but then he makes those mistakes, he makes those errors and then he finds himself in trouble. He's not a troublemaker, right? He's not a troublemaker but every time he does something that puts him in trouble it, these are very, very normal things that every people, do, each and every one of us do. For example, when we go to uh, movies, uh, we sometimes have to take a leak and uh, we have to find a lavatory, that is the washroom, right? And the uh, same way here also, the author might have gone to some theater and uh, uh, somewhere, even before the interval, he needs to use the washroom, so he comes out. What? happens is usually the washrooms are situated at a, well, if the place is new we just have to find it or we just have to ask someone if nobody is around we find have to find our own way right so they will be situated somewhere on the same floor and on, usually on the sides etc right but here while searching the lavatory he will always be in some alley he will find himself in an alley and then uh, those are self-locking doors. That means you can push it from inside and go outside. But once when you are outside and the door closes, there is no way to open that door, right? Because there is no knob. It can be opened only from inside or if you have a key, right? So he always finds himself stranded outside the theater while he or his friends or his family will be inside right enjoying the movie and he will be stranded outside yes he will be locked outside and that somebody has to come yes uh, to help him out from that situation and to allow again to come uh, just because he could not find the lavatory or the washroom by his own and he ends up in some other location 
Yes, okay, he is stranded, right? So in this way, this is a small instance given over here. Then, uh, when he goes out of his town, he has to book a hotel. Now, we also book a hotel whenever we go outside. Yes, we particularly remember the room number that we have rented. Yeah, it's for sure. Because that is only one number that we need to memorize. And it is nothing memorizing. Yes, you just keep that number in mind. Because then if you leave the keys at the hotel desk and when you return, you need to ask for your keys. And for that, you need to know your hotel number, uh, room number. Right? So this is a very, very small task that we usually assign to the mind. And mind uh, keeps it. Right? And whenever we want, ah, it comes to, we recall from memory, okay, my room number was 211 or um, 311 or uh, 425. We remember our room number and that is quite normal. Right? We should remember that. Otherwise, how are we supposed to get our... But the same, quite a small thing for everybody, it's a triple matter for everybody, it becomes a difficulty for the author. He always tends to forget his room number and then all the hotel records have to be searched. Yes, the guest's number, their name has to be searched either on the computer or somewhere and they have to come up with the room number and then I give him the room key. It's lying right over there in front of the uh, counter and the receptionist, she can easily hand it over. But now the customer doesn't know, the guest doesn't know the room number. Right, so they have to frantically search the records, find his name, find the room he has been allotted and then find the key and give it to him. So, my particular speciality now is returning from outside to the hotel desk reception and then two, three times he is going to forget the room number and everybody has to search for his room number and the room key and then give it to him. So, what other people do it quite normally, he usually confuses things and that puts him in trouble, puts others also in trouble. Now, we have a small other occasion over here where whole of the family is going from US to England on the eve of Easter, that is a festival and they have all taken a week's off and they are going to enjoy in England on that week vacation, one week vacation. So now everybody is at the airport Everybody is sitting quietly. Yes, nobody is fumbling with anything. So, um, and suddenly, he re um, uh, he remembers something that he had recently joined the frequent flyer uh, membership of the British Airways, and he remembered the card is inside. Now, when whole of the family is uh, going over there, of course, all the flight hours to be added in the program. Right? And he can take benefit of that. So why not take the card and register my flight as over there. So he needed to do that card. That is that frequent flyer program card he needed. And he remembered that he had put that card in his bag. That was hanging, a small a little bag that was hanging around his neck. And that's a very small bag and very small delicate zip is there. Now he's trying to open the zip of the uh, carry-on bag which he was hanging in on his neck and around his neck so he's trying to open the zip and the zip gets stuck because now he's fumbling that fumbling makes the zip get stuck over there somewhere and it, it is not opening so he applies force and he applies so much force and then he gets frustrated because the zip is just not opening up and he is not unable to retrieve his card so he in his frustration in in by not opening the uh, bag properly, he gets frustrated, uh, frustrated and in that frustration he, uh, he implies more and more force over there and at the end what happens, all of a sudden, with one jerk the zip is open. Now, it is with a jerk and the bag is quite small and the zip is open all of a sudden. So what happens, all the contents of the bag, they are flying all over the airport, that lounge over there, right? And the items that were in the bag, they have spread across all of the lounge over there and the size of a tennis field, right? Tennis court. And then he recounts all the things that were inside. There were paper cutting, newspaper cuttings, some important papers, chits and bits, uh, lots of coins were there. 
uh, they had come from America and stepped into England. So what happens is uh, they exchange the currency at the airport. So England currency is also over there. That is pound, right? And there was a 14 ounce uh, tin of tobacco which he had bought in England, uh, in America. Now that all those things are flying in the air and the tin, it flew in the air, dropped on the floor and the lid came open. Now, the tin is rolling and all the tobacco is prowling on the floor. No, he, he has a sort of heart attack over there because England just had uh, the budget and in each and every budget, the topic items, they are always on the rise. The taxes are raised over there. So buying tobacco in England is going to cost him more, very much dear. And that is what he's worried about. Yes. So <coughs> these are small, small incidents which the author writes to us where he fumbles over things and he confuses things, he forgets things and gets him in trouble. Then <coughs> we have yet, uh, yet another uh, experience of the author where he is uh, traveling by air and a small lady was sitting next to him and uh, as soon as the plane is airborne and uh, leveled, the drinks are served, soft drinks are served. So he might be clutching that soft drink in his hand and accidentally he spills his drink on the lady sitting next to him, uh, drenching her and uh, spoiling her dress. Immediately the flight attendants, they come over there and help the lady dry herself and uh, all that. But because the author had spilled his drink, that is why the drink was again given to him. But unbelievably, he second time spills the soft drink on that lady. Now just imagine what sort of embarrassment, what sort of shameful uh, act this is that you drench the person again with a soft drink. First you did it mistakenly, now you are again committing a mistake and that's really going to be awful and it's really going to be quite shameful over there. Right now we can imagine the situation of the author over here because he does, his, uh, does all the things accidentally and he still doesn't know how he spilled two times soft drink on the same lady again and again, right? And that also on a flight. So, uh, and yet another occasion we have still of traveling where he's traveling by plane and he finds his shoelace untied, so uh, came off. So he bends in his chair and leans towards his shoes uh, to tie the lace and at that same time, the person sitting ahead of him, he reclined completely so that the author cannot even stand up because now he's leaning and the seat is on top of him, right? There was no other way, so he finds a little bit space where he can extend his hand and draw the attention of the person sitting next to him. Yes, and that is how the person was able to help him. Yes, because he saw that the author was leaning against his, uh, leaning near his uh, feet and trying to tie the lace and all of a sudden the person ahead of him reclined his seat covering him completely as in such a way that he is in a crash position and he can't even stand up, right? So with the help of the um, uh, fellow passenger, he is able to free himself from the situation, right? So accidents happened with him again and again, again and again while he is traveling. So these are all the accounts, these are some of the experiences that he has while he is traveling. On another occasion, I knocked a soft drink into that we already discussed that we are. Now let us go ahead with the chapter today. And watching helplessly as my arm, like some cheap prop in one of those 1940-50 horror movies that name like the undead limb, violently swept the drink from its perch onto her lap. Uh, we were discussing this, right? So, uh, the drink is served and maybe the hand 
moved a little bit, yes, in an unwanted way, and spilled the soft drink onto the ladies well, directly in the lap, spoiling and drenching her and uh, spoiling the dress. And the uh, flight attendants, they come and dry her up and try to clean up whatever possible, right? And the drink is replenished because uh, the author spilled it. So he is given a replacement drink. And that also, as soon as he holds that second drink, he again spills that drink on the lady's lap, right? So, and now he is watching his hand, his eyes are stuck as his hand. What is this hand doing, right? Just few moments ago, you dropped the whole of the drink onto the lady's lap, and then you are given a drink again, and that drink also you drop on that lady. So I am watching helplessly as my arm, some cheap prop in one of those 1950 horror movies. Yes, horror movies were made in the 1950s, but technology had not developed that much the way we see horror movies over today. They are completely, yes, you know, full of technology, right? And they are, they are as if they are almost real. But then props had to be made some 50, 60 years ago because technology had not developed that much. So it was looking like some cheap prop as if the arm is just hanging in the air, yes, without any body support and the uh, author is quietly looking at it with a name like the unlid, uh, undead limb violently swept that drink into that lady's lap again. The lady looked at me with stupefied expressions you would expect to receive from someone whom you have repeatedly drenched. So now the lady also is looking quite astonished that stupefied is unbelievable. Yes, and that is also um, uh, it's not mysterious, but then you are dumbstruck that how can a man drop two times soft drinks on me? Yes, in a matter of few seconds or minutes. Yes, he, he just drenched me. Yes, I have swiped and I have cleaned up myself. And then he again gets a uh, soft drink and again he spills whole of that into my lap. So the lady is looking at me stupefied. That means in a quite an astonishing way, unbelievably, what the hell are you doing sitting next to me like this? Expression you expect to receive from someone you have repeatedly drenched. You drench, uh, you drench someone, you make him drench means making him wet all over. Yes, you wet someone by mistake, okay, that's okay. But then second time you do that thing, will somebody count it as a mistake? No. And a third, an oath that started with O and finished for with sake and in between had some words that, of course, yes, for God's sake, we say, oh, for God's sake, please stop this thing, stop this nonsense. Yes, what are you, who are you, and why are you sitting next to me when you can't control your hands and legs? Right, so uttered, uttered, spoke an oath. Yes, we started with O and ended with sake. We know, oh, for God's sake, right? And in between some words that I never heard uttered in public before, uh, maybe slang language, maybe some horrifying words, certainly not by a nun. Yes, uh, that smart, small little lady, uh, she looked as if she was nun. Yes, uh, and she was not a nun. But then she was such a cute small lady that you wouldn't expect such foul language coming out of her mouth in between that O and sick. O is the starting word, sake is the ending word, and in between such a foul language was said by that lady. Of course, that lady is going to give you foul language, bad language, yes, when you drench her two times over with soft drinks, and uh, uh, we have discussed this before also. Yes, some of these flights are caught by businessmen, uh, uh, businesswomen, uh, just going out in the morning, coming back to their hometown in the evening, and in between time, uh, some conferences they have to attend or some meeting they have to attend, uh, some client they have, they, have, they have to meet or some court appearance that they have to do. They just take the flight in the morning and come back to their home by evening so they don't take extra clothing with them and that's the problem, right? The uh, author spilled the uh, soft drink onto that lady's lap. It was clean but we know the marks, the the stain of the soft drink stays on the cloth and then you dropped again soft drink on that lady. You now that lady is going to give you some very, very foul and bad language and you got to hear that. So the author 
He is also staring at that lady with the language that she is giving to him and he can't do anything about it. He is just staring at her. Didn't expect such foul language or bad language coming from a lady who is looking like a nun. Yes? This, however, was not my worst experience. Now, he al also has some more experience on the plane flight. My worst experience was when I was writing important thoughts in a notebook. Now, this is not the only flight that he has taken. He has taken many flights and has lots of accidents. Whole of his life in, uh, while journeying is full of accidents. He accidentally makes those mistakes and that is why the uh, title of the chapter is very apt accidental tourist uh, accidental tourist that is because whenever he is on a tour whenever he is on a flight he commits accidents by himself and then he very very much regrets feels sorry about that and he doesn't know how those things happen for example if we see uh, the um, episode where he spills the, the soft drink on the lady now he didn't want to do that as a small cute lady sitting next to him, you don't want to spill your soft drink on that lady. And it just happened, the hand shook so violently that whole of that soft drink is on that lady's lap. Ah, okay, once it happens, you're sorry for that and the other person also thinks, oh, oh yeah, yes, it might have been an accident, his arm just shook violently, okay, it might happen to anyone, right? So nobody's that much, okay, it's a bad thing, but then it has happened. But what happens when you do that th same thing twice? In just a matter of few minutes, you again spill a whole glass full of drink on that lady. No, that's not a mistake. And you're going to get some foul language, right? So he makes, keeps on committing accidents all over whenever he goes on tour. When I was writing important thoughts in a notebook, what happened? <coughs> he was, he was making a list. Yes, ah, uh, you came uh, on the flight. Yes, you are going somewhere and you forgot your socks and handkerchiefs. So you make a list, buy socks. Yes, clutch drinks properly. Whenever you are on board plane, please clutch your drinks properly so that you don't spill it on somebody else. So he was m just making notes, sucking thoughtfully on the end of, the, of my pen as you do. Yes, as everybody does, as you, especially you people do. Because you, you people have to think a lot while you are writing WRTs or you are, you are uh, trying to solve a math uh, sum or a physics uh, sum diagram. You keep on sucking at the end of your pen or pencil, whatever. Yes, some people even have a more habit, not only sucking, you chew it. Why? So that, that happens with everyone, everyone does it, right? You keep the, the pen, end of the pen in the mouth. Because the writing part is near your fingertips. What happens if that position is inverted? Then, uh, because you are in your thoughts, you don't know when that position turned. That means the other end of the pen is near the paper and the, uh, the end with which you should be writing that nib is in your mouth and you are sucking at it. That means your whole of that ink is going into your mouth. So that is exactly what happened. Sucking thoughtfully on the end of my pen as you do and fell into conversation with an attractive young lady in the next seat. So he was making mental notes and he was also noting the track down in his notepad and at the same time thoughtfully sucking over that pen and he got into a conversation with the, with the young lady who was sitting next to him. So I amused her perhaps 20 minutes. So they had quite a long time. Uh, of course, the flight is uh, it's quite long, so they're just having a conversation and he was talking to her, say, 20 minutes? Okay, so they both fell into conversation and maybe a topic, interesting topic was that. So both of them were talking for some 20 minutes with the scattering of urban born moths. Then retired to the laboratory. This, so we were discussing and then after 20 minutes I got up and went to the washroom, laboratory, where I discovered that the pen had leaked and that my mouth, chin, tongue, teeth, gums were now a striking scrub resistant navy blue and would remain so for several days. He had been sucking kindly. When you have that all that two rupee pen where one end is a nib and the other end is usually open. Yes, and it is the use and throw pen. But what happens if you suck that other end? The 
ink instead of flowing down, if you suck, it will come into your mouth. Unknowingly, that ink is going to enter your mouth. Yes, and it is, it is always a scrub resistant. What is scrub resistant? For example, you write with that ball pen, you can't scrub it. It won't go off the paper or on any material that you are writing. It is scrub resistant and it's quite strong, right? So, when that ink goes into the mouth, all of you must have ex the experience. Sometimes we keep the ball pen open and keep it in a pocket and the uh, uh, cloth absorbs the ink and we have a, uh, quite a big spot, blue spot over there uh, on usually our uniforms, etc. We, we always have that. Sometimes it leaks in the uh, compass box that we are keeping or the pouch that we and whole of that ink spreads over there and you can't clean it. You just have to throw that thing away, right? But what about it if it goes in the mouth? Yes, your teeth are going to look blue or black, whatever ink you are using. Yes, your gums. Uh, sometimes it dribbles over the um, uh, chin also, yes, uh, so ink is everywhere and it's not going to go off with rubbing either with soap or any other cleansing material, that, st that stain is not going to go away for weeks together, several days, right, after lots of use, uh, washing the face continuously or brushing the teeth continuously or rinsing it. So in that way it will take several days before that stain goes away from your mouth. But till then whenever you open your mouth even to smile or say something that stink is going to be visible to other people and they are going to know what accident has occurred with you. Right? So you will understand, I trust when I tell you how much I ache to be so, to be very safe. Yes, I cram to be very safe. Yes, I long to be safe. I love to be safe side. I just close my eyes, just keep sitting there without doing anything. Because if I open my eyes or if I do any moment, I, uh, movement, I get into trouble. I would love just once in my life to raise from a dinner table without looking as if I have just experienced an extremely localized seismic events. This happens with everyone. Yes, sometimes. Uh, unaware of it, we are sitting at the dining table. Yes, and we suddenly get up. Or after finishing our food, we get up. We take the whole of the table together with us. Right, something uh, like uh, some belt, etc., gets locked with the table, and whole of the table is red and spilling all the contents of the table uh, that is on the table over the table. Yes, uh, maybe dal, chawal, do be here. The vessels they just topple over. Yes, chutney all over the place. We disturb all the things that are on the table. So might be family members are having their food also, right? And everything gets spilled, and their uh, plates also. They go to the, um, they fall the off the table on the floor. Yes, spoiling everything. This happens with us, but it is accident. But when you pray such things do not happen with you, it means you repeatedly do these things, right? Yes, when you disturb the table while getting up or you disturb others because all the food stuff is on the table, all the plates are there, people are still handing their food, right? And you disturb all of that, somebody is going to spill no water in that dish. Yes, a glass of water falls in the dish, now it's ruined. Yes, the food is ruined. So, he's actually praying for these small, small accidents not to happen with him. Yes, he's aching, he's in real pain and he's praying that I be sick and so, so that these th little accidents do not happen with me. For example, for once in a while, that means he is always doing it. So once in a while, he really prays to God, please God, when I am sitting at the dining table, when I am getting up, I should Remember that I should carefully get up so that I do not disturb others, I do not disturb the table itself, I do not spill anything on the table that puts me in trouble, puts other people in trouble. So, to rise from a dinner table without looking as if I have just experienced an extremely localized seismic event, seismic earthquake. Seismic event, that is an earthquake. Yes, of course, if you disturb the table, you pull the table with you when you're standing. Yes, two of the legs of the table on your side, they are completely up. 
full of the table, contents on the table, they are on the floor. Yes, everybody are sitting over there, but that dishes have slid and um, fallen to the floor, all the food ruined. They're going to keep looking at you. What is this person doing? He just wants to stand up. So they pull your chair back and stand up properly without disturbing the table. Now every time you stand up, you, it, happen, it looks as if whole of your body has just received some seismic event or an earthquake. There's a shock of an earthquake and you disturb the whole of the table. That is what the author is praying that it should not happen as if I, only I in that room has experienced some earthquake and that is how the table was disturbed. Get in a car and close the door without leaving 14 inches of the coat outside. This happens every time with everybody. Yes, and lots of time we see a perfectly well-dressed lady in a very good-looking sari sits in a car. Yes, half of the sari, is, she closes the door, but you can see half of the sari is hanging. And before you can see anything, yes, that car drives off. Yes, now jitna dhul, mitti, pani, chitye, ragada, jo bhi hoga, it's going to be on that sari which is outside the car, stuck outside the car. So, it happens many times with lots of people, but with the author, it happens again and again. Yes, whenever he sits in his car, he leaves a lot of coat outside the car and you know what will happen to the coat. Yes, first thing, it's going to become weak because it got stuck into that door. Yes, and it's going to tear off from there and you'll find all the dirt, mud over that little part of the coat which is stuck outside the car. Get in a car and close the door without leaving 14 inches of the coat outside. So it means that these are small, small things which happen to us also. But it happens once in a while. It doesn't happen every time. Yes, suppose that lady who is uh, uh, nearly 12, 13, 12 inches of sari is hanging outside the closed door and it's getting dirty. Yes, it's sweeping the road wherever it goes. Yes, taking all the dirt and mud and water everywhere. Right, and she is uh, going to attend a reception, a wedding party. And just imagine what the face would when she uh, steps outside the car and sees one part of a sari extremely dirty, right? No time to go back. Uh, a little bit washing and there and there. But what happens if the uh, sari, that part is torn? Uh, she will have to go back again, get ready and come back. So nobody's going to do that. But that happens once in a while. It happens once in a while. Next time when you sit in the car, you remember automatically the mind tells you, see, your dressing is any part still outside the car and you have closed the door. Now is still the time, open the door and take the clothing inside so that the clothing and you both are safe, right? But now it doesn't happen to you every time. This doesn't mean that the author is absent-minded, but then he forgets accidents and then he again falls into those accidents again and again. So he wishes at least once in a while that before closing the door, I should pick up my whole of the coat, which should not be hanging outside when I close the door. Yes, and making the coat tear away or get dirty. So once in a while, I pray that. Wear light colored trousers without discovering at the end of the day that I have at various times sat on chewing gums, ice cream, cough syrup, and motor oil, but it is not to be. This happens with us many times. Yes, especially when we go to the restaurants. Somebody has spilled dal over there. We are unaware of it. Yes, the table is empty. We just go and sit over there and then find something cold, cold, some part of our body where it is touching the seat, right? On our bottoms, on our legs. We find something cold. Immediately it strikes us. Ha, pehle wale bhaiya, dal gira ke gaye, mai iske upar I didn't know that. Right now, you don't dare to stand up. You don't dare to stand up because you know there is going to be a big yellow stain on your near white clothing or quite light colored jeans that you have worn. A very beautiful yellow stain is going to be there with spots of mirchi, that is red marks over there. Right, you know, but you're not going to stand up. It happens 
quite a lot of time. People just throw chewing gums here and there. Yes, without knowing you put your hand over there or you sit on it and that thing sticks with your clothing. So it happens. But with the author, it happens on and off. Whenever he is wearing some light colored clothing, then when he comes back in the evening home, he discovers that lots of things have stuck. Somebody has spilled tea on the chair, on the chair wooden chair, right? And that doesn't have a cushion and you didn't see that wet thing and you sit on it. So there will be coffee stains, there will be tea stains, some scrubs of food remaining over there that get stuck to the uh, pants and then it won't come off, right? Some chewing gum that would never come off, you just got to throw it away a whole of the pair of pants. Yes, somebody has spilled cup syrup. That also gets stuck on the pants. Motor oil, if you didn't see properly, right? So you sit on all those things and you dirty it. Sometimes we don't properly look what we are sitting on. So these things happen. But it happens with everyone once in a while. Sometimes it happens with us. Yes the pair of jeans that we are wearing or some fine clothes that we are wearing. We are always, our mind is always conscious about that and precautionary measures we always take, right? For example, when we go for some wedding reception or an important party, etc., some dinner, right? We always take care where we are sitting, yes? Otherwise, we just take out our handkerchief and wipe it so that it doesn't dirty our uh, pants, right? So, pants, clothes whatever we are wearing is so we take care of that but then with us it happens once in a while but with the author it happens always and he doesn't learn lessons from there what happens with us is we learn lessons from it right that this thing has happened same thing will not happen with me again so we, we, we will be extra conscious, we will be extra cautious whenever such things happen with us. So that when we are in the same spot, we remember it, oh, last time I was uh, at a wedding, this thing happened. So then I will be cautious. Yes, if a waiter is going with a tray, I will step aside so that he doesn't come and hit me and all those 12 glasses of soft drinks. Uh, it doesn't fall on me and then I can't remove my stain, the stain that are on my clothes. I just have to throw it away. So next time I see a waiter, that bell starts ringing in my mind and I step aside so that he doesn't uh, spill all his load on me. Now, on planes when food is delivered, my wife says, take the lids off the food for daddy or put your hoods up, children. Dad is about to cut his meal and of course this is only when I am flying with my family. Right? Now, he has other incidents with food also. Right? Uh, long distance flight. Uh, of course, when it is lunch time or when it is dinner time, breakfast time, this or just snacks time is any time. Right? So, on these long distance flights, especially when he is with his wife and children and the food is served. So, Wife is very well aware of the accidents, small, small accidents that the author makes. So, when children are especially near and the food is served, wife automatically tells the children uh, or instructs his husband also, now the food has arrived. Now, first thing you do is very carefully remove the lid without spilling the contents of it outside. So that if the author is not aware of that, because he doesn't learn from mistakes. So, he is going to pull off that and whole of the food is going to be scattered all around him and everybody will be drenched with the food, everybody will be looking at him and giving him very foul language. So, before he does that, the wife actually instructs him, ah, food aa gaya hai. Deere deere kolo, so that it doesn't spill. Yes, or in at some moment a time, tells the children, yes, hood upar kuro. Yes, so, uh, put up your hoods, so that now Papa is going to cut food. Maybe it, you don't know where it's going to go. Yes, a chicken piece or a meat piece is going to cut it, trying to cut it at that piece. Uh, takes a flight and lands upon somebody's head, right? And clothes and all that. So, put up your hoods, cover yourself. Father is going to cut meat, right? cut his food. 
Oh, of course, this, these incidents happen only when he is traveling with his family. When am I on my own, I don't drink, don't eat, lean over or to tie my shoelaces and never put a pen anywhere near my mouth. Now he remembers these things. So what happens is when he is all alone and traveling, he is extra cautious of these things. For example, he has a pen in his mouth, he immediately puts it in his pocket or he puts it inside his bag so that the pen is not there with him, he will suck on it and then make a hole of his mouth and teeth and gums and all that glue, tongue especially, right? <coughs> Same thing happens with shoelaces, right? He is very extra cautious that he is not going to lean again and try his shoelaces and at the same time the person sitting ahead reclines his uh, chair and then he is stuck over there. See, he doesn't eat, he doesn't drink when he is all alone. He will stay hungry, he will stay thirsty, but he is not going to eat and drink on flights because he knows he is going to create accidents with it. Yes, he is going to spill it, throw it everywhere and then everybody will be cursing him. Yes, leave alone bad language, they are going to curse him like anything. Even his food and drinks are all over them, dirting them. I just sit very, very quietly. What he does is he very, very steadfastly he is and tries to sit very quietly, not to move a muscle. Yes, so that he doesn't create accidents. I just sit very, very quietly, sometimes on my hands to keep them from flying out. What he does is, he puts both of his hands uh, under his bum so that the hands stay there and he doesn't commit accidents. So that his hands, suppose you don't do anything, you just wave your hand like this and at the same time that air hostess is um, going from there with a whole tray of food. You just wave your hand and she unbalances herself and whole of that tray of food is going to be dumped on some other passenger. Who is going to blame you? The, well, of course the air hostess or the air crew, we cannot say that because of this person this thing happened. Now she, that is a bad name for the um, company she is working for. Yes, so such crew is there who dump food on the people and dirty them on the, right? So. In order that his hands and legs don't fly here and there, he tries to keep them by sitting on his hands so that the hands stay there locked and doesn't come out flying and make accidents. And causing liquid mischief, very good words used over here, yes, liquid mischief, right? Uh, soft drink in the hand, pours it over the uh, lady si uh, sitting next to him. It's not much fun, but it does at least cut down on the laundry bills. Yes, uh, you have to take, uh, you have to pay someone for the laundry bills if you dirtied the um, uh, clothes of somebody, right? Expenses. So it's nothing about paying expenses, but at least it reduces the cost of laundry bills, not only your, uh, somebody else, but your laundry bills also, because when you spill food, it falls on your clothes also, and then you have to pay the laundry bills. Uh, get the stains cleaned out, right? So it is not fun, much fun to sit on your hands, but then keeping your hands out of accidents, it's going to save on your laundry bills. I never did get my flyer miles, by the way, I never do. Yes, because it doesn't keep account and every time he forgets to register them. I couldn't find the card in time, this has become a real frustration for me, right? Whenever he has done some flight hours, he wants to register it, at that time he won't find his card and that is why he is not able to take benefit of that flight hours. Everyone I know, everyone is forever flying off to Bali first class with their air miles, I never get to collect anything, I must fly 100,000 miles a year, yet I have accumulated only 212 air miles divided between 23 airlines. You see, if you fly 100,000 miles, if you fly 100,000 miles registered with that uh, frequent flyer program, then what happens, it gives you a huge benefit. But 
after flying so much all around the world because of his work because of his vacations in one year he has registered only 212 air miles because every time he goes to the airport he is not able to find the card and he is not able to add that flight hours in his frequent flyers program otherwise he could have very well reached the target and he would have got quite a lot of benefit out of that scheme but because he is not able to locate his card frequent flyers card program his card is not able to register and that is why he misses it although he takes quite long flight hours right but he is not able to register himself and that also he doesn't pick that british frequent flyer airlines he takes up any flight which is available and that is why he misses that frequent flyer uh, program because 23 airlines that means planes he have taken he has taken and he has uh, flown those as but not with british airways but with 23 different uh, airlines so he doesn't get the benefit of frequent flyers list in the british airways this is because either i forgot to ask for the air miles when i check in or i remember to ask for them but the airline then manages not to record them or check in clerk informs that i am not entitled to them one or other other way i always miss it sometimes i totally forget when i check in when i check in i should produce that card and say that these flight miles um, should be added to the frequent flyer program so that i increase my flight hours right now sometimes i am denied that this facility is not available to you if i show a card now when i have to show a card i don't have that card or when i even show a card but then the uh, the clerks over there they don't record it and i do not have that flight has increased in my program in january on a flight to australia a flight from for which i was going to get about zillion air miles the clerk shook her head when i presented my card and told me i was not entitled to any for example on a flight to uh, australia a flight that is going to give me lots of extra flight hours yes on concession now i didn't get it because when i handed my card uh, at the reception then i was told that i was not entitled to it how why ticket is in the name of b bryson and the card is in the name of w bryson the name on the card is w bryson whereas you have uh, booked your ticket as b bryson there is an there is a, there is some discrepancy in the name that you have registered with yes so the names don't match so you are not entitled with that if you had booked your tickets also in w bryson you would be entitled and those flight hours would be added to the program but because you booked your ticket you bought your ticket with b bryson that is why you are not entitled to that i explained to her the close and vulnerable relation between bill and william but she wouldn't have it yes i have the name bill i use william it is the same thing but the clerk is not going to accept it she has to go by the rules she is helpless over there yes you, you just by uh, uh, trying to have few words with her it's not going to work you can't take up a fight because she what she is saying is legally correct one is w bryson and one is b bryson yes your card says w then you should be traveling in w bryson now you book with bill bryson or you book with william bryson that's up to you but then i will go by the book i will go by the records right so you are not entitled you are not entitled and this is how in spite of those long flight hours that are going to be added to his program he couldn't get it so i didn't get my air miles i won't be flying to bali first class just yet perhaps just as well really i could never go that long without eating yeah i was going to bali but then i could have got first uh, first class rather than economy class i could have got first class because those flight hours would have been added to my program i could got a concession or some extra mileage would have been given to me instead of economy class when i pay for economy class then also i'll get the seats in the first class right i missed it now 
I'm going to Bali, but I can't take the privilege of my card because the flight hours were not recorded there. So this, with this small, small accidents, these are all the experiences that the author shares with us while he is always on travels. He always has accidents and sometimes the accidents, are, they are quite embarrassing and sometimes they cost him a lot. So we complete today's lecture over here. Thank you, students.